Hello, everyone, and welcome to Big Rob's Little Podcast number 14 with my special guest, Matthew Mounty. Finally, it takes you like, what, three weeks for you to bring Matthew Mounty on a podcast? First, you had Andre, who doesn't deserve to be on a podcast ever. You put on Clayton Sherlock, a guy who, eh, 50-50, I uh, like him, kind of don't really like him. And uh, the Youth Gone Wild you had last week. Took yeah. you three weeks. I should have been your first NWX guest. But at least uh, the producers of Big Rob's little podcast, uh, with my complaints, have sent me a nice headset so that my voice is very clear on today's podcast. Yes, um... Not a problem to send you those headphones. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have you on sooner. Um, you know, I won't let that happen again. Um, but starting off, um, speaking of which, what are your thoughts on Nolan Pink? What are my thoughts on Nolan Pink? Uh, the guy who, uh, as of Sunday, uh, including our singles matches, the one Royal Rumble we were involved in, uh, triple Threat, Fatal 4-Way, Tag Team Match, and the Lockbox Ladder Match at CWF. This will be, I'm pretty sure, the eighth time that we have fought in what pretty much has been a 14-month uh, rivalry. Uh, <laughs> so my thoughts on Nolan Pink is that, first of all, he seemed like a good guy. And then when I left... In August, due to injury, he took all my fans away from me. He took all my fan base. He took everything away from me. And then when I came back from injury in uh, December, he was gone with an injury. And I came back to reclaim my spot. And then when he returned in December also, he once again stole my spotlight. And my true thoughts and that is that he's nothing more than a trash bag wrestler with no talent. And all he can do is these flippity floppity 450 splashes and phenomenal forearms and all these moves. And he has no talent like yours truly, the real Canadian Matthew Mounty. So it's safe to say that you were pretty uh, upset or angry with Nolan, and that is why you are taking out all your anger and frustration on him mainly. Yeah. So, um, so you have a match with Nolan this Sunday. Uh, what it, what is next for Matthew Mounty after um, dealing with Nolan Pink? What it, what is next? Well, first of all, uh, this is the first time. Uh, that Nolan and I will be facing for a championship, and it's for my championship that was stolen by Easy Eric Kearney since I was not pinned or submitted in the match Tyler Blaze was in the Fatal 4-Way match at Nemesis. And so I'm going to take back what was stolen from me, the Northern Lights Heavyweight Championship, put it right around my waist or on my shoulder, and I'm going to become the first two-time NWX Northern Lights Heavyweight Champion. And that's what's going to happen. Okay. Um, and I'm going to have a longer reign than my current longest reign of 118 days. It's safe to say that I will be wearing my Matthew Money shirt this weekend. Um, I will be um, hoping that the second reign begins. I know you probably think I suck, even though the, I'm the, se the second rain will begin. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It will happen as of October 1st at NWX Fallout, CWF Studios, 20 Hartzell Road, yada, 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 uh, 2 30, doors open. The fact of the matter is, Fallout is going to be the night when the real Canadian era reunion tour begins again. All right, uh, Matthew Manny, who is your inspiration? Being a real Canadian in which here's one of my shirts, there's the other one that Robbie Deltz is wearing, which you can get for $20 each from small to XL, or you can get it for $25 for 2XL. 
being a real Canadian, I have been inspired by many other Canadians in this business. Canadians like Edge, Christian, Chris Jericho, even though he was born in the United States of America, but still was raised in Canada. Bret Hart, Canadian born Roddy Piper, the Mountie himself. I'm going to be the next great Canadian. And who knows, maybe I'll make it as far as WWE. Maybe I'll stay in Ontario Indies. Who knows? But the next great Canadian, the next real Canadian, actually, I should just say, I'm the only real Canadian wrestler in the Ontario Indies, and no one can stop me. All right. Um... So you've worked with guys such as Nolan Pink. You've worked with guys like Adam Jeffrey from Youth Gone Wild. Um, who do you want to work in the future? Who do I want to work with in the future? Well, if you're if you're thinking right now, if you're thinking right now that I'm thinking about working with Andre, that's not going to happen because Andre doesn't deserve to be in a ring like me. He doesn't deserve to be on the same level as me, even though he's gotten a chance at the CWF Heavyweight Championship. He's got to face Reckless Ryan Swift and fought Jesse Bieber, which was the heavyweight title match. Two men in which I faced before in my career. But uh, <clears throat> let's see, I faced Nolan, as you mentioned. I faced uh, Adam Jeffrey. I faced pretty much all the existing members of Youth Gone Wild besides Chris Lambert, who is also not on my level, so there's no point of facing him. So if I'm actually thinking of certain people, let's see. I've already fought Easy e I fought Reckless Ryan Swift. I've actually, little known fact, I have wrestled Chris Thorne before uh, last year. So if I'm going to think of a big picture, and if you're thinking about CWF, the bigger picture of NWX. Who do I want to face from that roster? Give me Mr. DDT himself. Give me Cody Deaner, because I'll wrestle Cody Deaner and prove to him that the redneck renegade cannot stop my Canadian cutter and cannot stop the deportation device of the real Canadian Matthew Mountie himself. Wow, that that is huge. You calling out Cody Deaner. Um Yeah, that's right. All right. So, Mr. Matthew Mounty, when did you start training and who did you train with? When did I start training? Uh so I started training uh Labor Day of 2014, so exact date I'm pretty sure was September 1st, 2014. And I actually trained at the Neo Wrestling Dojo in Niagara Falls, which was inside a, uh, a boxing facility. And uh, I was trained, uh, the two, pretty much the two head trainers were uh, Tiberius King, or by his real name, Jesse Scott, and by Scotty Turner. And uh, I was there for about, I think, six months before uh, they closed and then merge with the CWF training facility, CWF wrestling school, with uh, Chris Thorne, or by real name, Frank Rickman, and uh, with Easy e Eric Kearney, who is also a, one of the head trainers of the CWF training facility. So I've been there since, I think it was the end of March 2015, so I've been there ever since, training hard becoming a better Canadian wrestler day by day, week by week, year by year, the whole nine yards. Well, it seems like you've had an incredible journey so far. Um, so anyways, moving on, what are your thoughts on um, Youth Gone Wild? My thoughts on uh, Youth Gone Wild. Never liked Youth Gone Wild. Ever since uh, when I made my return in December, they uh, attacked me in the middle of the ring. Um, all all members, I don't I don't like any of them. 
Uh, I think uh, they're very overrated. They think they're all that. Uh, yet uh, they haven't had a uh, an impressive streak like yours truly, Matthew Mounty. Uh, these guys have went for the tag titles a bunch of times, and they kept losing and losing and losing to a bunch of uh, little boys known as Lean and Dab, Matt Goff and Spencer Pendercrats. And then, uh, yes, I'll admit Tyler Blaze was once the Northern Lights heavyweight champion. But uh, guess who beat Tyler Blaze for the championship? That was me. That was That's you. right. The first night I was Matthew Mounty, which people know who I was before. I won the Northern Lights Heavyweight Championship against Tyler Blaze, and that started the record 118 days. So, Youth Gone Wild, I don't like them one bit. Okay. Um, thoughts on fans, um, especially, you know, ones that, you know, don't appreciate the, what Matthew Mounty does. My thoughts on the fans, the fans who uh, should treat me well, but they don't. They don't like the ways that I run things, the ways I enforce law and justice into professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I don't know why it's still, eh, but like, look, you bet you may not like me, but you better well respect me for everything that I've done. Northern Lights champion, longest reigning champion. I faced many veterans. I faced many rookies and I've done a lot more in a short amount of time. In about two and a half years, I've been in the wrestling business. I've done more things than mostly anyone in the NWX roster has done in a lifetime. So yeah, that's what I have to say about the fans. They're not, uh, they're not great because they don't like me and they're definitely not real Canadians. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I respect everything you've done. Um, so, um, just to name maybe a couple fans, uh, what, what are your thoughts on Michael Cole and, and Sean Diltz? First of all, uh, I don't really concentrate on people's names, like uh, Michael Collin or any of these people who, uh, especially the only thing I know about Michael Collin is that he's a huge fan of Youth Gone Wild and wears their shirts every freaking event and cheers them on. But yet, for some reason, at one point, Michael Collin, you were a fan of mine. And all of a sudden, you turned your back on me for Nolan Pink, like the rest of the NWX fans. And Sean Diltz, uh, I'm assuming he's one of your family members. Uh, yes. The guy who hosts, who hosts the podcast, I don't even remember what the name of the podcast is. Whatever it is, the, what's the name? The name is The Main Event Podcast. The Main Event Podcast? The Main Event, okay, for first of all, you got one of these fans making their own podcast. And if you're going to call your podcast uh, something that's involved with the match card, it's I call it more like the, the Sunday Night Heat podcast or the kickoff show podcast because it's nowhere near a main event podcast. You're nothing, Sean Diltz. You are nothing like Chris Jericho, who has talk as Jericho, or even... Stone Cold Steve Austin, who has the, the broken skull, whatever it's called. And you're nothing, you're even nothing like Cole Cabana, the Art of Wrestling podcast. So from now on, and even when I was on the podcast, for some reason, he has Christmas lights on his freaking wall, and it's September. It's not even Christmas yet. And he already has his Christmas lights up. What kind of person has Christmas lights in September. This is outrageous. In Canada, we like our cold, but it doesn't mean 
that you can have Christmas lights on your freaking wall. And that's what I think about Sean Dills. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Stupid Christmas lights. Yeah. Um, see, it's it's almost think or uh, Thanksgiving, yes, and Halloween also. Um, but Christmas lights. Um. What are your thoughts on, and I must ask this because I feel like asking, Pelvis Greasley. Pelvis Greasley? Who? Who? Uh, um, Pelvis Greasley? Oh, wait, yeah, the guy that, like, uh, he wears a leather jacket or something, he shakes his hips, he thinks he's, like, Elvis and some other dude, I don't know. Uh, he's a nobody. He's about as a nobody as Matt Goff and all these people who think that they can uh, make it far, but they won't. They're not real Canadians like me. They're not real Canadians at all. They're nothing. They're nobodies. Nobodies. They're not like me. I see you're drinking out of the Miz cup. Are you a fan of the Miz? I'm just drinking out of a cup. That's all. I don't care about this American called the Miz or the fact that this is a Slurpee cup. I'm drinking water because water is healthy. Heck yeah, it is. You should be drinking real Canadian water. How do you not know that it's real Canadian water poured into this cup? It could be. That's the thing. I don't know. Um... Do you have any statements you would like to make before we end this podcast? Any statements? First of all, um, I'm the best in NWX. I don't care what people think. I'm better than Nolan Pink. I'm better than Clayton Sherlock. He, he claims that he's better, but... I Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm issuing this problem you got clayton sherlock who thinks he's all that because he's got good groundwork and he's worked for a couple more promotions than me but he's nothing like what i am a lot of times he's nothing more than a complainer that's all clayton sherlock is and he claims that i am not over well good because I'm going to go shoot on this, okay? If you are over as a bad guy, or at least that's what the people think I am, which I'm not a bad guy, I'm a good guy, then you're not doing your job right. And that's what I think for, about Clayton Sherlock. He's a complainer. He's no good. He's nothing like me. In the last few statements, all right, there's more statements. Real Canadian is not done yet. And uh, so now uh, come see me wrestle Sunday, October 1st at NWX Fallout. And also NWX has two more events in the month of October. We got NWX Rage Against Authority on Saturday, October 14th. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Bell time at 7. And we also have, and NWX also has the annual Halloween event we've had uh, called Haunting on Hartzell. Uh, that's Friday, October 27th, 6 30. Uh, doors open, 7 p.m. Bell time. Uh, I can't really think of any statements unless you say something and I cut you off. Poor Coburn Show. Poor Coburn Show. Pork Open Show the night before NWX. That's uh, Outstar Styles presents live pro wrestling. Uh, Saturday, September 30th. Uh, doors open 6.30 p.m. Bell time at 7. Tickets are $15. And uh, it happens 100 McMurray, yeah, McRae Avenue. Community living in uh, Pork Open, Ontario. 
And uh, I should have mentioned that tickets for NWX are $15 front row or $10 general admission. Come get your daily dose of real Canadian Matthew Mounty and buy one of my t-shirts, $20, unless you're 2XL, then $25. Thank you, Matthew Mounty. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, okay, so one other question I had. What is what is your viewpoint or what is your stance on um, the fact that Clayton Sherlock hits girls? Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure, more than certain, about 100.1% sure that it's illegal to do that kind of stuff. So uh, I think I, uh, one of these days, uh, I might have to, if there's any more complaints, I might have to arrest you. So, yeah. I just don't see why management hasn't stepped in and done anything about it yet, but that's, that's where you Because can management at NWX is stupid. Here's more statements. All right. All right. I bring law enforcement and justice into NWX and it's for a good reason. But then when you have idiots like Jesse Bieber who never show up, all right, what was the last time that Jesse Bieber actually showed up to an NWX event? And if he did, did he actually do his job? No, he didn't. He goes and sits in the audience with a bunch of other wrestlers and make random chants from movies and he does all this stupid stuff and he doesn't do his job. Why is he even the general manager? There should be a new general manager. I wouldn't even mind if we had the, the Priestin guy that we had as our general manager because he actually did a decent job as being a general manager unlike Jesse Bieber is doing right now. Jesse Bieber is the reason that my title was stolen He's the reason I had to put it on the line in a fatal four-way match. This is outrageous. This is what NWX has become. Do you feel like Nolan Pink robbed you of a CWF contract? Or was it more Andre? Uh, I feel both. I feel, uh, well, first of all, Andre powerbombed me through a table. He knocked me out cold. And I didn't get up and wake up and regain consciousness until the match was over. And I seen Nolan Pink hold the contract. Does Nolan Pink deserve a contract? No, he doesn't deserve a contract. He hasn't worked hard enough like the real Canadian has. And none of these people that were in the match deserved a contract either. Whether it was Matt Goff, Tyler Blaze, Clayton Sherlock... Easy E, even though it was his contract, and even Andre. Andre hasn't worked hard enough like me. And he thinks, like I've said before, he thinks he's all that because he won the NWX Tag Team Championships in his second match ever. And the fact that he got to wrestle Jesse Bieber and Ryan Swift in the same week. And like I said before, and because I'm not an NWX now, and that this is, from what I know, an unrated podcast, which is explicit, Andre, the highlight of your career, and I've mentioned this before, but I can actually say the real words now, the highlight of your career is that you were nothing more than Clayton Sherlock's bitch. So yes, I was robbed of a contract, if that answers your question. It does, thank you. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy week and busy schedule to be yes, on. The real the Canadians got a country to run. Exactly. Um, this Friday I will have uh, Connor Haywood and Sean Diltz as my guests. Um, and then Is Sean going to have his Christmas lights on this podcast? Because if he does, I'm not watching it. I, I have no idea, to be honest. I don't uh, want to see the Christmas lights on the podcast. And then on Sunday, right after NWX, uh, I'm having Matt Goff on my podcast. First of all, thank God that I was on before Matt Goff, or else there was something really to write about. And here's what's going to happen, all right? 
I'm gonna make you a deal, all right? When I become a two-time NWX Northern Lights Heavyweight Champion, I will take over an episode of one of your podcasts and I will make sure that your podcast on this edition will be more views than you've ever had and I will actually change the name. I'm gonna call it the Border Patrol Podcast where I will deport anyone off the live stream who dares to disrespect the real Canadian, all right? And Matt Goff is a worse idea for a guest on a podcast. So when I win on Sunday, I will even take over that podcast and I won't even have him as a guest. That's how it's gonna go. Cause I'm a real Canadian, he's not, and you're not, even though you invited me on this podcast, even though you've been nice to me all this time, somewhat, and even though you're wearing one of my shirts. I'm not a real Canadian. No. Okay. Nope. Not at all. No one's a real Canadian. Only me. Okay. Look at that. You can't even catch your book. The point was not to catch it. The point was to not have it fall on my computer. But... Yeah, well, it almost did. I know. Thank you for that. And then finally, next week, at some point, I should have Nolan Pink on my podcast. Nolan Pink without a championship because I'm going to be the two-time Northern Lights Heavyweight Championship. And that's a fact, all right? It's not a prediction. It's a spoiler, all right? I'm going to become the Northern Lights Heavyweight Champion. I'm going to prove everyone wrong. I'm going to prove that Nolan's singles victory win over me at the one-year anniversary of NWX was nothing more than a fluke, and I will defeat him, and I will end this rivalry once and for all when I hold the Northern Lights Heavyweight Championship over my head in victory. Until Friday, guys, this has been Big Rob's Little Podcast. Thank you for watching.